his keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. We worship you. I worship you. Just go ahead and wave your hand. You are here, touching every heart. We worship you.
just go ahead and magnify his holy name. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and lift your hands unto God even right now. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and go ahead and open up your mouth. Amen. We're not going to worry about the camera. Amen. Just go ahead and open up your mouth. God is bigger than any camera. Amen. We're not here for the camera. But we're here to make, hey, we're here to make a noise unto the Lord. Hey, all ye lands, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We worship. He shaba rede rodo rata rede riso. God told me to tell you he's going to fix it. Raba rede Go and worship. Lift your hands and worship. Go ahead and give them the praise. Go ahead and give them the honor. Go ahead and give them the glory. Go ahead and tell God your story. We worship. Robo Rede Rata Rede Riba Raba. Rede, we get no God. Rede, robo, rada, rete, robo, riba, we get low, Jesus. Rede, robo, rede, unless you come to him as a child. Rebe, you will know why it's gonna be in. Rede, riba, rete, roso, raba, rede, we love you. Robia, raba, rede, we love you. Rede Robo, we honor you. Rede Raba, we honor. Rede Robo, open up your mouth and honor him. Rede Robo, we give you the honor. Rede Robo, we leave our situation at the door. Rede Robo, and we honor you. Rede Robo, is it all right to worship him? Rede Rida, Jesus. Rede Raba. We worship. Rede Robo, we honor. Rede Robo, we thank thee. And we thank you. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank thee. Rede Rababa. Rede Raba. We thank you, God. Rede Robo, we thank you for the air that we Rede Robo Rada, we thank you, God. Rede Robo Robo, this is the air that I breathe. Rabba Rede Deri, I breathe. Robia Sundaya, Rede Robo, if you breathe this air. Rede, see, I worship. Rede Robo, if you breathe in his air. Rede, say I honor you. Rede, if you breathe in his air. Rede, say I love you. Raba, say I love you. Rada, cause I know a man. Rede, they want to hear I love you. Rede, he said if you love him. Rede, then you will open up your mouth. Raba, and you will worship. Rede, you will open up your mouth. Rede, and you will worship. Raba, I know a man that's saying. If you love me, you'll open up your mouth and worship. If you love me, I'll come first. If you love me, I'll be first. If you love me, I'll do first. If you love me, I'll go first. If you love me, I'm seeking somebody that's willing to go first. Somebody that'll say, I'll go, God. Send me, I'll go, God. God is looking for somebody that will not confer with flesh and blood. But at his word, you will get up and go. Do I got anybody in this house? Do I got anybody out there that will say, God, I'll get up and go. I won't confer with what they say. I won't look at what they say. Ah, but use me, God. I want to be used in this season, God. Ah, use me, Lord. You are the powder, God. And I am the clay, God. And I surrender. I surrender. Oh, 
Jesus I surrender and all to him I freely give to thee I owe Shaba just go ahead and magnify God I surrender he shatta I surrender Go ahead and magnify the Lord. Tell him that you surrender to him. He wants to know that you surrender to him. You surrender his will to you. You surrender your will to him. You surrender everything that you have. No inhibitions with God. Ah, but God, I surrender unto thee. Ah, it is to thee that I freely give. It is to thee that I freely owe. It is to thee that I give my heart. It is to thee that I give my mind. It is to thee that I give my soul. It is to thee that I give my trust. I don't even trust in myself. But I trust in the one.
See, what we've got to understand is that when God chooses a people, he wants you to hearken unto his voice. Yeah. See, the children of Israel were a people that were chosen. Can I talk to the chosen on the night? Oh, yeah. The Bible says that you were chosen, amen, into a royal priesthood, amen. And if you were chosen into the royal priesthood, that means that you've got to hearken unto the voice of the Lord. He said, only if thou will carefully hearken. There's that word only. Only means that if you will only accept what the job is paying for the salary. Amen. We didn't tell you that you were going to come in here and get over and above what we've established because we've already told you what we can afford. Amen. God is saying he already told you what he could afford, which was the price for your soul. Amen. Only if thou carefully he hearken. Carefully means that you're going to do it with simplicity. Amen. I believe God said to work out your salvation with simplicity. Amen. He said, let everything be done decent and in order. Somebody ought to say in order on tonight. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. Somebody say this day. Amen. This day was the day that they that they were speaking of. You know the song that say, "This is the day. This is the day that the Lord have made." And he was speaking to the Israelites for that day. Amen. But how many of us know that Jesus said, "I came not to take away the law, but I came to fulfill it." And how many of us know that it's a new day? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Let's go over to Romans. Hallelujah. But keep your finger on Deuteronomy. Amen. Can God? have his way on a night. Amen. This day, there is a new day. Amen. There is a new day. Somebody ought to say there's a new wine. Amen. Why? Because you cannot put old wine into new wine skins. Amen. There's something called a New Testament. Amen. And the New Testament is the dictation and not only the dictation, but it also sanctifies us from the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans, the 10th, excuse me, the 5th chapter, I'm going to go over to the 10th verse. It says, I believe this is where we left off last week. Uh -huh. Have your way, Holy Ghost. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Can I read on? And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Well, let's stop right there. Amen. The last week we began to deal with the word atonement. Amen. Atonement means that there is something that is covering you. Amen. When you have a company, they have what is called the vision. They have what is called the president. They have what is called the CEO. And those roles cover the ones that are working up under them. Can I talk to you on tonight? Amen. If you're going to walk in this thing called the atonement, you got to have something that cover you. If you're going to walk in this thing called Jesus Christ, you got to have something that cover you. Uh -huh. If you're going to walk in this thing called life and ministry, you got to have something that cover you. Uh -huh. Because the Bible says first Christ is over the church. Can I talk to you on tonight? Amen. And once Christ is over the church, he is established. Amen. The man next. Come on somebody on tonight. Amen. What is God saying? God is saying let everything be done decent and in order. Amen. Because God is not a God that is out of order. Amen. When we think about the spirit of God, he's always a perfect gentleman. Amen. Have you ever went out on a date with a man of my God, Jesus, and you find out that he was not what you expected because he couldn't cover you? Why? Because he did not have the spirit of reconciliation. He was only looking one way. Can I talk to you on tonight? Ah, but you know who you want to be aligned with, my God, Jesus. And God is saying that we need to be in the season of our lives when we're picking out people that can be covenant partners, my God. Somebody that will be a covenant in what we're trying to do. Somebody that will acknowledge what it is that God has sent us to do, my God. Even Romans said that they will be covenant breakers. Go ahead and tell yourself, I ain't looking for no covenant breaker in my life. But I'm looking for somebody that will fulfill the covenant. Uh -huh. Like the covenant that Christ put on my life. Uh -huh. God sealed your life with something called the blood. Can I talk to you on tonight? And if he sealed your life with something called the blood, means that my God, that once the blood came down on his head pouring, uh -huh, the Bible said that, that the blood came streaming down. Can I talk to somebody stream on a night? Uh? His blood came streaming down and if his blood came streaming down, that means that he's covered you 
deal with something called the atonement. The atonement is the shedding of blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of your sin. Can I talk to you all tonight? But isn't it amazing that when you don't meet a man, he don't want to share nothing with you? Because he don't want to shed nothing for you. Can I talk to you all tonight? He don't want to get rid of the, all the extra baggage, all of the things that was standing away. I need somebody that ain't going to be no covenant breaker, my God. But I need somebody to be an endorser. Can I talk to you all tonight? So you got multiple people in this world. You got the covenant breaker and then you got the endorser. If you get an endorsement, my God, that means that you got a John Hancock, yeah, uh -huh. And God said, I'm going to write my law inside of your heart. Ah, uh, yeah, there it go right there. I believe that is that thing. My God, Jesus, of an endorser. Uh -huh. God said, I'm going to endorse you, my God. I didn't mean to preach. I know that's supposed to be Bible study, but I feel something creeping up on me. And what you got to understand is that when you surrender, you got to submit to what God say. And if God say, preach, my God, Jesus, you got to understand, my God, that preaching of the cross, my God, is foolishness to them that perish. Ah, but for me, baby, it is the salvation of my soul. Oh, let me slow down here. He Shabbat. So as we look at Romans, the fifth chapter, we find out that he said in the 12th verse, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men that we have sinned. Uh -huh. That means that there's something that they did inside of the garden of hallelujah Eden, and that means that they found out that they had something up on them. Can I talk to you tonight? Uh, I know I ain't the only one, my God, uh, that didn't face something, my God, uh, that seemed to be as though it got you by the ankle. Uh, uh, but God said that sin passed unto all men. Uh, have you ever been in a situation when you was little? Uh, and when one got in trouble, they all, they lined you all up and said, who did it? Uh, and if you did not confess, they said, I'm going to give everyone every last one of you. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, yeah, sin passed unto all men. Me and my God. Uh, isn't it amazing that after that sin passed to all men, uh, God said death by sin, my God. Uh, that means that you were set up to die when you came inside of this world. Uh, but I'm so glad that Jesus made up in his mind uh, that I'm going to write my law inside of your heart. Uh, see, the Bible said through the law came, my God, the law and a bunch of rules. Uh, uh, but by Jesus came truth and mercy. Uh, uh, can I talk to you about truth and mercy on tonight? Uh, see, what you got to understand is that when God heal a man, uh, he does it by his mercy, my God. Uh, why? Because the Bible said that the men said, uh, have compassion on my daughter, uh, who is grievously vexed with the devil. Can I talk to you on tonight? Uh, see, God can have compassion, my God. Uh, he said in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, uh, to have compassion on the preacher man, uh, because he himself was compassion with sin. Uh, uh, can I talk to you on tonight? But he became no sin. Uh, that means that his body was found in a place uh, where it was tempted by everything. Uh, that means that your body is going to be in a place where it's tempted. Can I talk to you on a night? Uh, oh yeah, there's room for the thief at the cross, my God Jesus. Uh, that means that there's something that God want to do in your life. Uh, that means that you ain't got to be weighed down with that burden and that sin. Uh, uh, turn it over to Jesus uh, and he shall work it out. Can I talk to you on a night? Uh, that means that God got a place for you at the cross, my God. Uh, God is reminding me of the malefactor. Uh -huh. The malefactor the Bible said was up on the cross. Uh -huh. And when you look at the malefactor, that means that it's just simply sin. Uh, malefactor don't mean no type of sin. Uh, but it could be the dope dealer, my God, Jesus. Uh, it could be the prostitute, my God. It could be the one that carried the religious spirit. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, them that don't think that they need the blood because they feel like they are the blood. Uh, Said your works ain't gonna get you in this thing. Uh, uh, your works will praise you at the gate, but it ain't gonna get you in. Can uh, I cannot talk to you on a night? Uh, and so, what we gotta understand about the malefactor uh, is the malefactor was somebody that understood they sin, my God. Uh, uh, the Bible said that mercy, my God. Uh, can I just add a little bit for you on a night? Uh, the Bible said that mercy found them on the cross, my God. Uh, see, 
all you got to do is surrender to the cross. Can I talk to you tonight? I'm talking to you about your surrenderance and your submittance. If you would just submit to the cross, how that means that the cross will my God. See, you ain't got to pick up and carry the cross because the cross will carry you, my God. All you got to do is put your affections on him. Put your afflictions on him. Why? Because, my God, all God is looking for somebody that is afflicted. And the Bible said that God went through, my God, Bethlehem. He went to that place of Bethany. And he said, I'm looking for somebody that is sick. All God got to do is look for the sickness. Can he locate the sickness in this room? Can he locate the sickness out there, my God? Can he locate the sickness in your house? All God got to do is find something that don't align with his spirit. And he say, oh, that's out of order. Remember, God is not a God that is out of order. Let everything be done decency and in order. God want to get things in order in your house. He want to clean up your house. He want to heal your house. He want to deliver your house. He want to show you that your house is his house. As for me and my house, I'm not, we're going to serve the name of Jehovah. Ah, uh, yeah, God is looking for a few good men. Ah, uh, that will surrender and submit unto the cross. The Bible says that and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Ah, yeah, we've all went through some things that we're not proud of. Ah, but at the end of the day, we're able to say that Jesus paid it all. We all went some, through some things that we didn't make the right decisions and the choices. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, you can say that Jesus covered my sin. Uh, why? Because love covered a multitude of sin. Uh, and if God so died for the world that he loved, my God, uh, that means that his love had already covered me. Uh, and so that's why I don't mind surrendering to the precious blood of Jesus. Uh, uh, I know it was the blood. Uh, I know it was the blood. Can I talk to you? I know it was the blood, my God. I know it was the blood. You know the rest of it. You know the rest of the song that says the blood was just for you. Without the shedding of his blood, my God. How could your garden, my God, of Eden be covered? And so we find out that Adam and Eve, they found themselves in a place, my God, where they had made a mistake, my God, Jesus. Because the Bible said that Adam and Eve, they got outside of the will of God. Well, how do we know that they got outside of the will of God? We know that they got outside of the will of God because they began to question God. See, that's why God said, don't question him. How would endless fables, my God, and childish things, how but to stand on the word of God that was preached? And when you began to question God, then all of a sudden you find out that you give room for mistake. How but if you're going to be surrendered and submitted into this thing, then you can't question what God is doing in your life. You can't say, why this and why that? Just get into alignment with what God is calling you to. And Adam and Eve found out that when they began to question God, my God, Jesus, then they found out that the enemy was able to creep in. The Bible said that the devil crept in unawares, my God. A silly woman laid, my God, in sin. He began to creep in the back door, my God. And if you give the enemy a chance, he'll take a foothold. Because the Bible said that when you're drawn away to lust and entice, can I talk to you on a night? Then it becomes sin, my God. And so Adam and Eve was drawn away with the lust of their flesh. Because Satan began to make them lust. Make them to believe, to desire the things that they didn't have. God said to be happy with what you got. I've learned to be a base. And I've learned to be about. But at all things, I learned to suffer for Jesus Christ's sake. Can I talk to you on a night? I began to question God. About why I ain't got no jewelry on her. I said, God, I can't find no jewelry. He said, Maybe I don't want you to wear jewelry. He said, Maybe you in a season of humility. Maybe it ain't all about the bling bling and this and that. Maybe I want the people to hear my voice. Uh, we are the people's check on the night. And so, what is God saying on the night? You ain't got to dress your life up for nobody because this ain't no dress rehearsal. I came to give it to you as pure as I can. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven And all of his righteousness And then these things shall be added unto you You gotta know the season that you in You may have the Bentley But that don't mean that God wants you to drive it Can I talk to you on the night You may have the money to buy the house But that don't mean that God wants you to go out and get the mortgage 
Maybe God wants you to see what he can do supernaturally. How we serve a supernatural God. And so we find out that Adam and Eve, they found themselves in the garden, my God. They found themselves of a garden, my God. A garden of lust and sin, yeah. They say a garden of Eden, my God. But really it was a garden of lust and sin. And they began to question God. When God first created them, they were submitted. Because he said, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. But the minute Eve got out of the alignment of her man. I talk, can I talk to you about your man all night? The moment you get out of the alignment of your man. I know you're a preacher. But you got to stay in alignment. See, first Christ and then the man. Uh, yeah, my God, but we don't want to submit. Uh, are you preaching woman? Uh, yeah, what is God saying on a night? Uh, God is saying that if you have the right conversation, uh, then you can might win the man. Can I talk to you? Uh, he ain't talking about winning his hand. Uh, but he's talking about winning his heart. Uh, because the heart of the king, my God, is in the king. Uh, and if you would follow the direction of the king, uh, my God, the Bible said that Eve found herself in trouble. Why? Because she got out of alignment of the man. And when God asked Adam about Eve, the first thing he said was that, it's this woman that you gave me. Can I talk to you on the night? He began to blame God, my God. That's why the man got to take accountability for his woman. Even when his woman is out of order. Can I talk to you on the night? But the problem within the black family is this. Is that the man don't want to take accountability for the woman. If things get messed up, my God, Jesus, the first thing he do is begin to blame her. But you ought to be blaming yourself. Because the mind was saying that the man is supposed to teach his own wife. Your wife ain't supposed to be going around from man to man to man. To find out what the word of God say. Can I talk to you on a night? See, in the Old Testament, I don't know where I'm going this way. But I'm surrendered to the power of the Holy Ghost. See, the Bible talking about surrenderance and submittance on the night. Uh. See, the Bible say that even the woman was not even allowed to go into the sanctuary. Uh. The woman was not even allowed to go into the tabernacle. Uh. Why? Because she was not accepted. Uh. Uh, but there came a time of 1919. Uh. Uh, yeah, when women began to be able to vote. Uh. And they got a lot of voting power. Uh. There's nothing wrong with getting voting power. Uh. But you gotta know who that power belongs to. Can I talk to you on the night? Uh. You don't have the power over the man. You don't have the power to usurp your authority. I cannot talk to you on the night. Ah, but even if you know sometimes you gotta shh and keep it on the down low. Even if you know sometimes, my God, you gotta act like you don't know. My God, Jesus. And you gotta let the man be the man. I don't know why I'm going this way. But you gotta let the man be the man. Even if the man make a mistake. Ah, you know he made a mistake. But the first thing, listen, let me tell you something. I was in Home Depot, uh, and I was with another man, uh, and the man began to talk to the other man at Home Depot, uh, and the man at Home Depot was trying to tell him what he needed, uh, and I knew that this man was wrong, uh, the man that I went with to go get the, the material for the building, uh, and I knew that he got it wrong, uh, how when I looked at him, uh, and I heard the Holy Ghost say, uh, the first thing you got to understand, daughter, uh, is never expose a man in front of another man, uh, and I was silent, and I didn't say nothing. Uh, and I know that the man that I was with knew that he was wrong. Uh, uh, but it wasn't my job to show him that he was wrong in front of nobody else. Uh, some things you gotta reserve for the secret closet. Uh, some things you gotta reserve for the pillow talker. Uh, uh, can I talk to you about a pillow talker? Uh, because even Jesus understood a pillow talker. Uh, he said it is upon your pillow that you cry. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, my God, Jesus. Uh, and God is saying if you wanna rest your arms in the man that I chose for you, uh, then you've got to understand surrender it. You've got to understand submit it. That's why over 70%, my God, speak to me, Holy Ghost. I hear God say over 70% of marriages come because the woman just don't know how to be submitted. You don't know how to be submitted to mistakes. You don't know how to be submitted to the wrongs. But my God, Jesus, see, if you want this thing to go, you got to get low, my God. If you want this thing to work, you got to get my God. You got to give up what you think, my God. And save that for another day, another time. Ah, uh, yeah, the Bible goes on to say, uh, For unto the end law, my God. Uh, I'm in the 13th verse. Uh, for unto the law, sin was not.
not in the world, excuse me, for unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. What you gotta understand is that you're not wrong unless your husband show you. Baby, you got out of order on the night, but I still love you, and I'm still gonna cover you. Yeah, you don't know it's the law unless somebody show you that you're wrong. The children of Israel didn't know that it was a law unless God had written out the law. Ah, yeah, where there is no sin. Oh, my God, there is a law. Can I talk to you all tonight? That's why God said in the New Testament, I'm going to get rid of the law, my God. I'm going to get rid of things to happen in the way that you want them to happen. And I'm getting ready to cover a multitude of sin, my God. I'll go over to Romans 12. I thank you, God. God say, go over to Romans 12. He said, I beseech you in the first verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I'm going to read that again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That word beseech means I strongly advise you. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I strongly advise you. To beseech means that you need to search it. If somebody say, I beseech you, that means there's a strong advisement and you need to, you need to research it. You need to search it out. You know, when you work for a company, they have what those things are called the 360 evaluation. And in a 360 evaluation, they give you the opportunity to respond. That means that you've thought about what they said and you searched out what they said. God says, seek me while I can be found. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That means that Paul was begging them. Oh, yeah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. There was a reason why Paul wanted them to beseech and search and find out that they present their bodies as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice means that you're submitted. A living sacrifice means that you're surrendered. Not to my will, but your will. You know, we, we say the prayer I have a Father who art in heaven. How be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We seek his will above and not our own will. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How can your body be a living sacrifice in a sick? Talk to us on the night. Oh, yeah, we got people in the body of Christ that got diabetes and they got heart disease and the heart is the number one killer, silent killer of the black woman. And they got all these issues and they got all this stuff, but yet still present my body as a living sacrifice. How do I present my body as a living sacrifice? When my body is real inside of pain, can I talk to you on tonight? How do you present your body as a living sacrifice when your body don't even feel like it can sacrifice no more? How do you present your body as a living sacrifice when you feel as though don't nobody understand your pain? How do you present your body as a living sacrifice when you understand I've got my God fourth stage terminal cancer? How do you present your body as a living sacrifice? My God, there's nothing to sacrifice left. Everything is burned and take away at the state count. Talk to you on the night. Uh, everything is riddled, my God. Uh, you ain't got nothing left. Your body is dead, 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 dead. Uh, how can I present my body as a living sacrifice and I got prostate cancer? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I can't even make my soldiers march. Can I talk to you on the sun on the night? Uh, how can I present my body as a living sacrifice? Uh, when I got this third man speaking in my mind calls for schizophrenia. Uh, how can I present my body? Oh, you think they ain't no schizophrenia in the body of Christ? Uh, how can my God, that's why pastors is killing themselves. Uh, something gotta be telling you to kill yourself. Uh, because God's voice don't sound like that. Uh, uh, that ain't nothing but the devil. Uh, that's that third mind man that you listening to. Uh, how can I present my body as a living sacrifice? Uh, uh, when the more I try, the more I find up, I'm falling back down. Uh, how can I present my body as a living sacrifice? Uh, uh, 
God when I find out that I got Alzheimer's disease and I can't even remember? How can I present my body as a sacrifice? If you ask me a scripture, I couldn't even tell it to you. How but somebody ought to say mercy. How that's why Paul said by the mercy of God. There's only a mercy in God that you're able to submit. And God is saying on a night, no matter what your body is, if your body has been sacrificed to be burned on the cross, my God, if your body has been sacrificed to be beaten until it's dead, I'll submit your body to Jesus Christ. Because Paul understood the surrenderance of the snake bite. Because when he got off the ship of Malta, the Bible said that he went on the other side. And when he went on the other side, he found out that when he began to talk to the local, my God, inhabitants, he found out that there was a fire. And when he found out that there was a fire, he found out that he wanted to warm himself by the fire. Isn't it amazing that you try to get to things that will warm you? And Paul understood that once he got his hands inside of the fire, ain't it amazing that God will give you work to do? And when you get your hands inside of the fire, my God, oh, just put your hands to the plow and you'll find out about the fire. Oh, the fire of God, my God, Jesus. And Paul found out that there was a fire. There was a fire that he never met before. Because when he got his hands on the inside of the fire, somebody ought to say that the viper leaked out, my God. Ain't it something about amazing about the viper? Is that the viper don't care who's in the fire. All the viper is looking for the hands that is on the plow. Ah, but I came by to let you know tonight. Although they slay me, my God, yet shall I trust in God. And Paul found out, my God, that there is a way to be able to handle the snake bite. There's a way to handle the viper. And the Bible said that Paul was full of the Holy Ghost. And what you got to understand is that when you surrender and submit, it's the Holy Ghost, my God, that live on the inside of you, my God. And I'm going to tread upon serpent. And I'm going to, my God, Jesus, I'm going to tread upon serpents, my God. And I'm going to crush the scorpion. How can I talk to you on today? And the Bible said that Paul found himself a ha ha. I got to get up here. Why? Because uh, you got to understand that fact that Paul found himself. Uh, he found himself inside of a rock and a hard place. Uh, how the Bible said that Paul understood. Uh, he understood because he had a road of Damascus experience. Uh, and when you got that experience in your life, uh, I don't care what you put your hands to the plow to do. Uh, uh, hit me with your best shot. Uh, uh, devil, I can take you. Why? Because uh, God said he gave me power, my God, to tread over the scorpion. Uh, the Bible said that God gave me power, my God, to knock out the hands of the devil. Uh, I got power, power, power. If you understood the power of God, uh, you would understand that you got the ability uh, to crush the enemy at his job. Uh, and I'm going to keep my hands to the plow. Uh, I'm going to keep my hands on the mark. Uh, because Paul said, I'm going to press towards the mark. Uh, Go first, uh, uh, but if I got a debris in the house, uh, you understand that it's your job to go 
first because God is going to deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. I cannot talk to you all night. And so they would give me the candle, right? And as I took the candle, I found out, my God, Jesus, that if you're going to lead these people, you can't be afraid of no alley rat. You can't be afraid of no sewer rat. I ain't worried about no sewer rat. I know rats wherever I go, my God, Jesus. A rat ain't doing nothing but looking for a little bit of cheese. A rat is looking for cheese. Huh? So when you see that rat, just say, huh? it's all right, rat. I understand what you want. Huh? You want some cheese. Can I talk to you all tonight? Huh? And I found myself in a place huh? where I was leading men, boys, women, and girls. Huh? Uh, yeah, I was born to lead. Huh? Tell yourself, I was born to lead. Huh? And if God was going to use me to lead, huh? he said, woman of God, the first thing you got to understand at the young age of 11 huh? is that you got to understand what's inside of the sewer. Everything is inside of the sewer. Can you imagine that at 11 going inside of a sewer? My mama think I'm out playing somewhere. Uh, but I was a time boy. Come on somebody. Uh, I was looking for the things that challenged me. Uh, and God is saying I made you in my image and in my likeness. Uh, because once Adam and Eve was challenged in the Garden of Eden. Uh, really what the devil did was challenge me. I uh, uh, cannot talk to you all tonight. Uh, and I and I found out that I was going in this sewer. Uh, but God was getting me ready with courage. Uh, uh, he was getting me ready then to say, uh, I ain't afraid, my God, of terror by day, my God. Because God is that candle. As uh, long as I get in the sewer, I understand I got a light in my head. Uh, he's a light, my God, unto my feet. Uh, and a lamp unto my path. Uh, just give me the candle, baby. Uh, Oh, 
chair, God. He is the rose of sharing, my God, inside of your sick mortal body. Hallelujah, Jesus. We find out that Paul said to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Now, if I'm going to be in this thing, then the first thing I've got to understand is that God is doing something in my surrenderance. God is doing something in my submittance. You're not being surrendered and submitted for nothing. You're being surrendered and submitted for the living sacrifice because he became the living sacrifice. God don't want you to do nothing that he couldn't do. He said, if you're going to do greater works than I do, then you're going to present yourself as a sacrifice. You're going to surrender and submit your will unto me. Because what you got to understand and know that the moment you tell God yes, you find out that God is your daily bread. He ain't no daily bread to nobody that have not surrendered. Because the Bible said that when you live as a sinner, your way becomes hard. But God is a close friend unto them when there is no friend. He's a rock in a weary land. Just go ahead and lift your hands and begin to worship him. And what you got to understand and recognize is that... God is saying, I want to be everything that man was not to you. I want to be everything that that loan was not to you. A lot of people take out loans on cars and they lose the car for whatever reason and they find out that the insurance that they had only paid so much. But God is saying that he is the gap in what you need. And they find out because they didn't have any gap insurance that they're not covered. But I know a God that know how to cover you when you don't have enough for the mortgage. I know a God that know how to cover you when you got sickness in your body. See, what you got to understand about sickness and disease is that there's really no cure for it. The only thing that man knows how to do is pump you full of medication so that you don't feel the pain. But what happens when you get home and you feel the pain? What happens when you get home and you feel the heartache, heartache and pain cause so much shame? What happens when you can't lift your hands to worship? Because you feel condemned. But he said, come unto me, all of those who are heavy laden. And I want to give your soul, your soul. I want to give that all, sir. I want to give it rest. Rest in your aching soul. Hey, Shaba. Rest in your aching mind. Rest in your aching. Your aching. Your aching. Your aching right now. And you ache. And you hurt. But I want to lift you up. Lift you up. Give you peace. Give you joy. Give you love in a perverse world. Perversion is all around you. But I want to give you the fullness, the fullness, the fullness of my joy. That's what you got to understand. That in Jesus is the fullness of joy. It's not just a little joy, but your joy becomes full. I'm complete in him. I'm complete because
Because he completes, he completes my life. I'm complete because he's complete. He said it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. I finished what you need on the cross. I came to bleed, 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 bleed out, and I bled out, and I bled for you, and I came to that place where I had mercy, mercy. Forgive them, forgive them, for they know, God is moving on your heart right now, for they know not what they do, not what they do, not what they do. They don't know what they do in, in the garden of Eden. They don't understand. I'm covering, covering, covering. I'm covering their sin. I covered you, covered you, covered you. I'm your covering to the end. The end, end, end. The end days are upon us. And we're in the end days. And in that end day, you will hear the shout of the trumpet. And in that end day, you will hear the lion roar. And in that end day, you will understand that only Jesus has the trump in his hand. In that last day, you will understand that Jesus came to give you one chance. In that last day, you will understand that men will go into rocks and caves to hide. Because the glory of God will be such a surprise. And his glory filled this place. And his glory this temple, this temple, temple, temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives. He lives in you. He is. He is. He is in you. He is through you. He is by you. He is for you. He is. He is you. Body, body, body. Body of Christ, the living sacrifice. <clears throat> the reason why you're a living sacrifice is because you are the body of Christ. And if God became the sacrifice on the cross, your body it belongs to you. It don't even belong home. It don't even belong home. It don't even belong home. It don't even belong to you. Your body, it belongs to your husband, 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 husband. There is no, I got a headache. There is no, I got a backache. Your body, it belongs to your covenant. He, Jesus is your covenant. And he said, I'm going to cover you until your husband come through. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to me? Your body.
was she hurt her hurry up. I ain't studying you. There's the Doha. But I gotta worship her. That could be somebody in social media. Ready, you got a door in your house. Ready, hit the door. Ready, but I ain't let nothing hold me back. Rabba, I didn't let men hold me back. Ready in 20 and 21 long enough. Ready, I ain't let no sucker. Rabba, coming to suck me dry. Ready, I ain't let no turkey. Ready, fall out of the sky. Ready, but I gotta worship. Rabba, I gotta worship. Ready, I gotta pray. Tell yourself I won't be worried. I won't be hurried. God wanna take his time with you. He shall. Hallelujah. We have so many things that we surrender. We get ready to go. And God is saying, I just want an hour of your time. You know that movie? We get ready to go. We in Ephesians, but you know that movie with Brenda. I forgot the name of that movie. With Tyler Perry and the woman, Brenda, you know what I'm talking about. With the son of Calvin, right? Meet the Browns. She pulled up what that man made an hour. And she slammed it in his hand and she said, Can my son just get an hour of your time? And that's what God is saying. Can the son just get an hour of your time. I know you busy. Oh my God. He shall Ephesians. I just gotta be obedient and go here. He shot Ephesians 4 and 15. Says, but speak the truth in love. May grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. That seals it. That's 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 the icing on the cake. But speaking the truth in love, Paul said, may grow up into him in all things. See, you're not going to grow up in God until you hear the truth from God. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. God wants you to bear much fruit. Next week, we're going to deal with fruit. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, we're going to deal with bearing fruit. Because there's some fruit that I see that's grapes, but they look like prunes or dried up. Hallelujah. And God wants us to bear much fruit, he said. He said, because if you don't bear the fruit, you'll be hewn down. He said, you're looking for somebody that's going to bear fruit. I'm going to tell you like God told me a long time ago. He said, if you don't preach, I got to bring you home. That's what God told me. He said, daughter, if you don't preach, I got to bring you home. Because see, we, we entered into a covenant together. And I'm not a covenant breaker. And once you partake of the goodness of my kingdom, it's impossible to restore you to repentance again. Seeing that you crucified the Son of God afresh. For me not to preach, it would be a mockery to God. He said, I got to bring you home. What do you do when you get in a place in your life where you're not really bearing fruit because of the situations around you? Life will put you in a knot where you don't even feel like you want to preach. What do I got good to say to anybody? The devil didn't whoop me up. But God said, I pray for you. You know that faith and fruit go together. Hey, Shaba. You can't have no fruit unless you got faith. When your faith dry up, your fruit dry up. Ah, yeah, 
God going to dig into that fruit next week. Ah, he wants you to bear much fruit. Not a little, but much in abundance. We're doing a $30 seed on the night. Shabbat. That's what God say. A $30 seed. For those of you that are giving through social media, you're going to do that through Cash App. It's dollar sign Alyssa Narvez. You know how to spell it. For those of you that are going by PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash the edge network church. Hallelujah. So prepare your $30 seed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. You know, God is showing that. We well, ain't going. <clears throat> but God is showing that. Hallelujah. It's 30 because Satan took 30% of the angels. 30 represents that number three. And it's for the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And what you got to understand is that when you sow, God is saying that what the enemy took for you, from you, God is going to give it back. That's what that seed means. That's what he's saying. 30% of the angels went, amen, with the enemy. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and, and sow our seed. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And get ready and go. Hallelujah. Well, this is it. God is doing something in this season. God is doing something in this hour. I don't want to miss it. Amen. No matter where you are, you don't want to miss what God is doing. Amen. Tell yourself, I'm not going to miss it. Amen. You're not going to miss it. Why? Because you're not going to miss him. Amen. He don't want you to miss him. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we get ready to go. Go ahead and sing unto him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bow down. Bow down and worship him. Worship him. Oh, yes, uh-huh. Oh, worship him. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Bow down and worship him, enter in and worship, oh worship him, we get ready to go, if you're sewing by PayPal, it's paypal.me forward slash the Ed Net Edge Network, I'm drunk y'all, the Edge Network Church. Hey, bow down, Hobia. Bow down, bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Come on and sing it. Bow down and worship. Ship him, we can go into in. Hey, oh, into in. Come on and sing it. Consuming fire, sweet perfume. His
holy ground. Your heart is on a holy ground. Your ministry is on a holy ground. Your marriage is on a holy ground. Your life is on a holy ground. Yourself is on a holy ground. You stand it on a holy ground. If you understood a holy ground, you would bow down. So come and bow. Hey! Bow down. Hey, in the name of Jesus, you would bow down. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, everybody stand up. Let's get ready and go. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Prayer, hallelujah. Just come stand right here. You can turn it off, baby. 